Hi everyone, my name is Casey Hilferty. I'm Associate Director of Career Development at Gwena Mercy University. Uh, welcome to today's employer meet and greet. Today we have Greg from ESF Camps who will be discussing some general information about the camp as well as some current and future um, job opportunities. Uh, so Greg, um, whenever you're ready, you can sh uh, go ahead and share your PowerPoint and then we'll get started. Great. Thank you so much, Casey, and thank you for um, allowing me to join you all today at Gwinnett Mercy University. It's so great uh, to talk to you. Uh, what I was hoping to do today is, as my um, screen pulls up is, is just to give you a little bit of background on ESF camps. Initially, I'll just go over information on the camps themselves and then talk more specifically about positions uh, that we offer. And also I'll talk a little bit about how those positions might be able to be used as an internship, should that be a, a need for you. Um, so just for starters, just to give you a, a little bit of background, um, ESF stands for Education, Sports and Fun. Uh, we were founded in 1982. Uh, we operate summer day camps, mainly within the age ranges of three and 14, although we are starting to move into some uh, teen and high school level programming. Um, we have a year round staff that prepares and plans the programs, designs the curriculum, and then we recruit uh, teachers, grad students, college students uh, to work at the various camps, most of which are day camps, but we are starting to get a footprint into overnight camps as well. And I'll touch on that. Um, in terms of where we are, um, we are close by. We, are, we definitely have camps close to Gwinnett Mercy's campus. Uh, one of our locations is we have two camps and one at Norwood Fontbonne Academy and Chestnut Hill College. We operate one of our ESF camp locations that uses both campuses. And then I'll talk a little bit about our dream camps, which are uh, we have a nonprofit foundation and operate camps for uh, inner city children, and I'll mention that too. But each of the locations you see in the Pennsylvania area are either in or around Philadelphia. They're local. Um, if you're not from the area, we do also operate similar programs in New Jersey. Um, William Allen Middle School is in Moorestown, so that's still close to Philadelphia. Chapin School is in Princeton, more central Jersey. Uh, Riverdale Country School is in the Bronx. And then uh, in Connecticut, Trinity College is in Hartford. Greenwich Catholic Schools in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, for those who may be from Maryland or near that area, Gilman School is in Baltimore and Academy of Holy Cross is outside of Washington, DC in Kensington, Maryland. Um, what's not shown, and I'll mention this a little bit, is we also operate specialty sports camps with local professional teams that have additional locations not shown here. And I'll mention that as well. Um, I'm not gonna test you on this. I know this is a lot to look at, um, but really we have three types of camps that I'll mention and I'll just go through this briefly just to give you an idea. Uh, first is there are multi-activity camps that offer a variety of activities. So the mini camp, the day camp, senior camp, uh, these offer a mix of activities, art, sports, swimming, science, drama. Um, and then the, the other multi-activity camp is Sports Lab, which is a multi-sports camp. It offers a variety of sports, uh, which we operate in partnership with Under Armour. Uh, so for campers looking to do a mix of activities or mix of sports, that's like the first group of camp programs. We also do specialty camps. If a camper wants to focus on certain activities within a given week, we do specialty camp in arts, technology, science, and at certain of our camp locations, academics as well. So where you see specialty major camps, tech camps, uh, Center for Growth and Innovation, uh, various names at different locations for these types of specialty camps. And then we do specialty sports camps. We run tennis camp, and then we do also operate camps in partnership with professional sports teams. So locally in the Philadelphia area, we run a series of one week camps with the Phillies, with the 76ers. Those would be specific to Philadelphia, South Jersey and Delaware. Um, and then Brooklyn Nets basketball, that's specific to New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Arsenal soccer is everywhere we operate. That's a European brand, so we don't have to be regional with this. We operate Arsenal as, you know, as far north as Connecticut and as far south as, as Maryland. 
Um, so these camps do hire as well. Um, and, uh, and the next um, area, I'll talk about positions. But I did want to talk about Dream Camp. Uh, although ESF itself is for profit, we do have a nonprofit foundation where we operate similar camps that all actually offer a little more. These children are on scholarship as a result of grants, um, and they participate in ESF type programs, plus some academics, plus they have year round after school mentoring. Um, and this takes place right at Chestnut Hill College, as well as Trinity College in Hartford. Uh, so we are hiring for this program as well, and it's very local to Gwinnett Mercy. Um, so here's a rundown of positions. Uh, we do, and I'll show you where to find actual position descriptions, but I'll give you an overview and kind of break it down by age level. Uh, if you are an undergraduate student, you know, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you can apply for counselor, coach, swim instructor, and, and we have counselor positions open pretty much in any camp that we have. Um, this is basically means you're working with a particular age group of campers with a co-counselor and assisting in a variety of activities as the campers proceed through their schedule. If it's mini day or senior camp, they're doing multiple activities, or if it's the major camps or tech camps, it's a different activity focused on each week. Uh, if you are interested in sports, um, we are looking for coaches in the sports lab. This would be helping with instruction in our multi-sports camp. Um, and the aquatics position, this is a swim instruction position. If you're looking to get teaching experience, this is one very good way to do it because our swim program is mainly instructional. Um, and ESF also reimburses for lifeguard training with conditions. Now, if you are a junior, senior undergrad, in addition to counselor, coach, swim instructor, you know, where uh, you can also apply for a number of our teaching positions. Um, so if you have background in an activity where you see where it says activity specialist or tech camps lead teacher, um, if you are a junior, senior, not yet graduated, you can apply for these. You just need that background in that activity um, and, and experience with children. Um, and then of course, grad students, college grads, alumni, we're definitely looking for you know, people who are already out there working and teaching as well. Um, the lead teacher, group specialist, assistant teacher, this refers to more of a senior level person who works with counselors, especially in our younger age groups. This person is not necessarily leading one activity, but they're leading a group and they may, they'll still assist in a variety of activities as well as lead activities themselves. Um, so the lead teacher, group specialist, some camps might call this a head counselor or a lead counselor, but the idea is it's a, it's a, a person at a higher level of experience working with a counselor in a particular group or bunk. Um, and then Club OT, that's the only thing I haven't answered yet. We have an after school program um, and that's a combination of staff who may work during the day and can work extra hours but we'll also hire a dedicated staff. This is kind of nice if you have something going on during the day, like if you're taking a morning class in the summer and you can't really start working till the afternoon. Um, hours for this would typically start at two o'clock and go till 6.30. Um, so that's another angle. The rest of the camps, basically you're looking at a day of eight to four or 8.30 to four, depending on the position. Now, what do we look for? Um, you know, these, bu these bullet points that you're seeing would just boil down to two things. We, we want people that want to work with children and, have ex and or have experience in an activity that we offer. But the common denominator of all these positions is working with children. Um, so it's something you have to know you, you want to do um, and because it takes a lot of enthusiasm and energy to be successful working with children. And, the, and that's, you know, that's what we're gonna look for as we go through our interview process. Um, every camp wants their campers to have a great time, but at ESF, we certainly do too, don't get me wrong, but we want our staff to have a great experience. Today, what I'm talking to you about are summer positions only. Um, so why is that helpful? Why does that matter? Uh, we want this to be resume building for you. Um, these are paid positions. 
it's a nice schedule. It's it's Monday through Friday. We don't have you know, a lot of recreation type activities. It can be late nights and weekends. We may have weekend trainings and, and evening trainings, but once camp starts, it's just Monday through Friday. And besides camp being fun, which we want it to be fun for our team members, we want it to just be a great career building experience. We develop the curriculum in advance so that you don't have to come up with things from scratch. Certainly there's some things you'll come up with and prepare for, uh, but it is structured in advance. And we have training prior to the start of camp. And then if the position requires it, like aquatics, we, we reimburse for lifeguarding as well. Um, the last bullet point I wanted to talk a little bit about, and I can certainly discuss in more detail, but we find without changing anything about our summer job that ESF, the ESF summer job can qualify for certain types of internships or field experience. The ultimate deciding factor is your professor or your major or your degree program. We can't make that decision, but what we do, because our camps involve training, a uh, structured curriculum, um, significant hours per week, you know, 35 to 40 hours per week. Mentoring, all internships require some sort of mentoring and we have an experienced leadership team in each of our camps. This is just what, that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to mentor and lead our staff. So if you find that you would like ESF just as a summer job to get experience, great, that, that's wonderful. But if you think this summer job might also be able to help you get internship and field experience, we can explore that with you. You know, the first step is always, you need to go through our interview process. We have a selection process, um, you know, like any other job, you know, you do have to interview and be selected. But if you do um, go through our interview process, receive an offer, accept an offer, that's really where we can dive into that internship question. Um, and then I'll just kind of end on keeping this, I, I'll flip back to any page, Casey, you want me to but I'll, I'll stay on this page for a bit to um, just show contact information. We have an online application at esfjobs.com. So that second line is where you would apply online. That's also where you would see our, our position postings. Um, you know, we, we do post jobs directly on college sites such as Handshake and Simplicity. Um, so you can, you can definitely see information there, but ultimately the first step is to apply online at esfjobs.com. And then we just put our ESF camps homepage. If you do wanna read more about our camps and programs, you can definitely go there too, but we've really upgraded our ESF jobs website. So you can go there really to find just about everything. And then that's where you can view actual positions, which are sorted and organized by um, location uh, as well as position type. So I'm just going to stop there. Uh, I want to mention my colleague, Elisa Surawayak. She's our Associate Director of Talent Acquisition. Once you do apply online, it's pretty likely she would be the first person you'd hear from. Uh, she oversees recruiting in for our Pennsylvania and Maryland camp locations. Uh, if you are from New Jersey, New York, or Connecticut, one of my other co-workers, Colleen or Ada or Michelle, um, would follow up with you there. We're, we're a small team. We work together. Um, so I'm gonna stop there, Casey, and kind of allow some time for you to ask questions of anything that I, I may not have covered that you thought might be useful uh, for students to hear. Awesome, thank you so much. That was incredibly informative. Um, I do have a couple questions. Um, what are some things that you look for specifically on a student's resume? Yeah, thank you for asking that. You know. Off the bat, we're going to look for a few things. We're gonna look at the major. We're open to any majors, first of all. I wanna be clear, any major can apply for this, but if we see a child-related major, if it's education, psychology, or a, a social work-related type major, that is relevant to what we do. There's also other types of majors such that could be sports-related, um, and, and not all colleges have these, but examples would be exercise science or kinesiology or, or, or a STEM major. We do have technology-based camps and we do recruit a certain number of STEM candidates. So those majors are majors we would look at closely. If you're not in one of those majors, there's other things we look at too. We are looking for experience with children. So if you've worked in a camp before, if you've done volunteering, um, whether it's at a place of worship, oftentimes those have childcare opportunities. 
Um, if you've done recreational coaching, um, if you have assisted in some way at a school or if you've done student teaching um, that's definitely something we're going to look at and then the third area would be act experience in an activity that we offer um, so if you do have experience in art or, or science or drama or if you do have sports or aquatics experience or technology experience we're going to look at those things too and um so I would say those would be the three areas. Um, you know, we're going to look at the course of study. Uh, we're going to look at experience with children, and we're going to look at experience and activities that we offer. Great. What are some skills or traits that you are seeking um, in an employee? No, I'm glad you asked that, Casey. That's that's really important. Um, I have had a chance not only to be a recruiter, but also to direct sites. So I, I kind of have that lens as well. Um, the people that work successfully at ESF have a, a number of things in common. One is a high level of enthusiasm because children pick up on the adults enthusiasm. So you have to want to do this and that enthusiasm has to show. Some of us are introverts, some of us are extroverts, that's okay but just being able to convey enthusiasm and interest in working with children and in the camp activities is very important in your own way that feels natural to you. The second thing is a respect for protocol. Um, we're responsible for children. Safety is always first. Safety was our highest priority long before COVID ever came around, but COVID just certainly amplifies that. But we're responsible for these children and we have protocols around just about everything we do. Again, long before COVID came around, but with COVID even more so. But we want people who are gonna be safe, who are gonna make good decisions and, and who are gonna respect protocols. So that would be the second thing. Um, and then, you know, that there are other skills that are helpful. Being organized is helpful. Camps, and it's not just ESF, camps have schedules they follow. So being organized and being able to acclimate to a camp schedule and, you know, starting and finishing on time and getting the group to where they need to go, uh, making sure they have their belongings. And then being organized takes you back to safety too. You have to remember to do head counts at certain times and keep track of your campers, you know, in, in a variety of ways. Um, so I, I would say, and then the, the last and one that's very important is working with other people. There's not a single thing you do at ESF by yourself. You're pretty much always working with somebody. Um, and when you first, you know, when summer begins, there's going to be people that know each other who've worked at the camp past summers, and then brand new people. And it's really important for those people to bond and to work together and support each other because the brand new people bring a lot to the table. They bring outside experience, and then of course the returning people bring past experience. Both are very important to us, but it's really important that people can work together. Great. Are there any additional requirements such as a CPR license or any clearances that you require? Yes, that's very important. In terms of clearances, there's two things we do. Um, ESF uses our own provider to do a variety of background checks. However, we do still require the Pennsylvania-based clearances for Pennsylvania sites, which involves fingerprinting, an online mandated reporter training, and an online child abuse check. Um, so those are things you would go through once you're offered a position and accept it. That's when we get into the background checking. If you're working in our other states, we still use our vendor. <clears throat> um, and then we follow those states requirements. Um, there are some very specific requirements um, in Maryland, uh, New York, and Connecticut as well that go beyond the, the baseline. Even if the states didn't require it, we would do our own baseline background checking regardless. That's what we do. So we'll do our own baseline checking and then we follow whatever mandated requirements occur in the state. Um, so that's the certification, sorry, that's the clearance um, piece. The certification piece will depend on position. Um, the CPR first aid, we don't require that for every position. 
lifeguards have to have lifeguarding CPR and first aid. Our nurses, you know, we hire nurses, so they have to have an RN plus nurses typically keep their CPR current. Um, we, at our pro sports camps, our Phillies, 76ers, Arsenal camps, we hire athletic trainers. So that'll require an athletic training certification. So there's certain positions where we require it, but majority of counselor, coach, um, uh, you know, activity specialist positions, most of those do not require a specific certification um, that would be optional. There's a few of our teaching positions that require a certified teacher to do it. And we indicate that on the job posting, but for the most part, um, you, you know, the, the, the added certifications are just for specific positions, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, could you share a little bit about the interview process? Yes. Um, what would happen once a candidate completes the online application, um, there's a resume review. And if we review the resume and see some of those things I mentioned, then we contact the candidate to set up a phone interview. Um, so the first interview is typically by phone. <clears throat> and then based on the, res you know, the results of that phone interview, if it works for the candidate, works for us, and we're hearing um, the experiences we need to hear that fit the positions that we're hiring for, uh, then there's a follow-up interview. The follow-up interview is lengthier. If it weren't COVID, it would be in person. With COVID, it's typically a video-based interview by Zoom. And that interview would be more like 30, 45 minutes. Um, and we're asking more in-depth questions. Um, and I'll give you a little hint on this one. There's many employers that ask something called behavioral-based questions. And that's just a fancy word for saying, you need to give an example. You can't just say, I have this skill. You have to provide an example of a situation when you used a skill, what steps you followed and how it turned out. And um, I'm just gonna give a plug for career centers. Every career center will give you guidance and resources on doing this type of interview. Take advantage of that. Talk to Casey and her, her, her coworkers and take advantage of those resources because I've done mock interview days at career centers and the questions are very similar. Uh, so if you practice those and prepare them, um, it's going to help you a lot to be able to provide examples of times you've worked with children or times you've worked with coworkers. Well, I'm not going to give away the questions, but having those examples ready to go is really important. And then the last tip I'll give you is being able to take your resume. There's a lot on people's resumes, but you need to be able to know your resume well enough to give a 30 I don't know, a 30, like a one minute overview, like elevator pitch for lack of a better word, to be able to give a one minute overview of your experiences in a concise way that helps an employer kind of understand your background. Um, so those are two tips I would give you, but getting back to your question, Casey, it's a, it's a resume review, phone interview, full interview. And then at that point, the other pieces of the, of the decision-making are reference checking so we have a part one of our application. After your phone interview, you complete part two and provide references. Um, and then between the time of the interview and the time the, the time of the second interview and the time of reaching a decision, it's about seven to 10 days because it allows for reference checking. So each phase, if you, you know, get past from one phase to the next, um, that, that's how it would go. Um, you know, not everybody makes it through the phone screen. Not everyone gets selected from the interviews. It's like anything else. We, you know, if there's more candidates than positions to fill, um, there may be great people that we can't select, but still give it a try. Um, and if if somebody really has qualifications, we just don't have space. We keep track of that too, for future for future consideration. Great, thank you so much for also encouraging students to utilize um, our services. We always encourage students to utilize examples in their answers. It's, it's so helpful for an employer to get to know what you'd be like in, in the real situation. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we wrap up today? Um, I, I think we, we covered a lot. Uh, and Casey, thank you for the great questions. Um, I would just say timing wise, 
Um, most of our hiring, our hiring season occurs mainly January through the summer. So we are still accepting applications. Um, so time frame, just so you know, applying earlier is always to your advantage, but don't let it discourage you if you aren't ready to apply until May. I mean, if, if it's May and you've just decided, okay, I think I want to do this, don't let it stop you. Um, you know, the earlier you apply, the better it's to your advantage, but don't let it stop you if you find in May or June that this, this is of interest to you and maybe something's changed that else you were looking for and you want to look into ESF, it's still worth, it's still worth applying. Don't, don't just give up. Wonderful, thank you. For other employer meet and greets and additional programs and events, uh, please go to our website at www.gmercu.edu slash cd and click on events. I wanna thank Greg again for wonderful presentation on ESF camps. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank Casey, you. Casey, thank you so much. It was a, it was a pleasure to be here and, and appreciate the opportunity. Thank you again.